Hey everybody, this is Dark Guardsman. We're back with another video. Now it's just going to be a quick status update to kind of you know, check in and uh, show kind of what's going on and everything else. Uh, still not a lot of huge amount of progress going on. I'm now just finishing up the last few of my classes. Today's the last day of my school, so it's going to be great. I'm going to be finally done, get my degree in computer science, and have tons of free time. But since last video, I have been working on making a few changes, tweaking a few things. There has been minor improvements to how missile flight has been working. This is mainly just collision checks and everything else. So that way, when you fire a missile, it actually can detect the ground a lot better and should theoretically not act up as much when hitting certain types of unique edge case blocks. So things like air blocks that are not actually air blocks or like heat blocks from aircraft or something else. Another thing you may have noticed when looking at the red matter is that I actually have improved the red matter. Uh, not just visually, but logically. Logically, it has been uh, added a small little lag check to it to prevent it from running longer than 30 milliseconds. This is a big deal because 50 milliseconds is a single tick. So if the blast ran longer than that, you could end up with a huge amount of lag. So it's got a 30 millisecond uh, check on it to make sure it doesn't run any longer than that, which has improved a lot of issues. Uh, there were problems with um, the red matter when you detonated it in an open area where it couldn't break any blocks. For example, in a nice big bedrock open area from a nuclear blast, the, the game would basically stall out. It wouldn't stall out in the sense that the game would fail to run or fail to move or do anything that happened. It would be to the fact that the red matter blast would take somewhere around like 100, 200 milliseconds to run, which is basically four ticks. It would stall the game out to the point where you as a player couldn't move, and if you were running on a server, you would guarantee lose connection. So this has been fixed. It's a temporary holdover. I do have to just completely recode the red matter at some point. Uh, but that's at least the temp fix is there, so for those of you who are running servers, it should work. Uh, additional to this, uh, there's just been minor other tweaks. Um, the command system for ICBM. Uh, is slowly getting reworked. I'm going to turn it into a sub-command system which should make adding more commands in the future much, much easier. So for those of you who are server owners that rely on these commands to work, they're going to be running more effectively. Uh, there's been minor tweaks to the commands. The actual lag command, which previously only murdered off entities, now actually will murder the blast off itself. This is an important uh, notation, is that the position of the entity for the blast and the pos position of the blast itself are not the same. Uh, this is especially the case for things like chemical blast and everything else where they spawn an entity at the bottom of the map. So if you run a lag check at a thousand meters, um, or not a thousand meters, like a hundred meters, and you were over top of where the chemical explosion are is, you may not hit that entity and kill it off. Now we have the blast removal so it'll kill the blast off, which will kill the threads off as well, which is another big thing. So when you actually run the lag command, the threads themselves will die off as well, which was not previously handled by this system right here. Uh, of course, I might tweak this system as well to make it run a little bit better. But that's now implemented, so you can actually kill off the lag system, um, and it will work. Uh, there has been tweaks to how the blast command runs. The blast command now will support uh, tilde options. So if you actually run a, uh, a blast here, which go over here, I'll talk about the red matter at the end, since it's kind of really cool, and I'll talk about it. But uh, we'll go over here and we'll run off a command to show how the uh, little tilde key system works. This, I think, is the same as how other commands are run in other mods and, of course, the vanilla game. Of where you could essentially do, like, I believe the TK command was an example of this, where you could do tilde to know that you wanted to use your relative position for something. Well, the blast is the same way. Additional to this, I actually added a alias for the ICBM Classic. Previously, it had to be ICBMC in order to type the command in. This was a bit annoying because in 112, there is only one ICBM mod updated. There is not the other ICBM version. So the there's no need for the competing um, or difference between the commands to make sure that they don't overlap. In this case, it will uh, register the alias. If I ever do update ICBM2, it has a check to make sure that it will turn that alias off to give ICBM2 back its command reference. But you could do something like this, blast, nuclear, and you can do uh, tilde. I have added a dimension check to this as well, so you can now specify dimension. But you can do something like this and say I want to set off a blast 100 uh, in front of me, and that will set off. Um, actually, that will set off to 100, and you need to actually add this to the front of that, and it will do 100 relative to my position and that should have set off somewhere around here let's uh let's do negative 100 there we go so that'll set up a blast relative to my position this is really useful for map makers who want to do command blocks or 
some other system to make sure that these blasts do go off and they can get different things. Of course, you can spawn almost every explosive short of the actual missiles at the moment. Missile Command will eventually come around so you can spawn missiles, which would be really useful once again for server owners and map makers who want to do really cool things. So that is available to that. And of course, a lot of the commands are going to get uh, cleaned up and worked on and everything else. Now, back to the red matter, since this is probably the main reason why I wanted to make this and show this off. I was toying with this uh, specifically because uh, there was lag issues. So I was like, you know what, why am I in here working on the lag? Let's clean the render up and make the render work a little bit better. Uh, so the main improvement is there's no longer a size scale for the blast. This is one of the things in the older version, what you would have happen is that the blast would scale up in size. And let me actually open up a separate Minecraft client just to show this off. So we'll go ahead and pop multi-MC open. And yeah, we'll launch the Sponge One. Sponge One's got ICBM in here, and we can test that really quick. I was testing Sponge compatibility at some point, fixed a few issues. Uh, I believe I covered that in a previous video. But why that's loading up, so the sky scale is gone. There's been improvements to the animation time. The animation time now has a ramp up time and ramp down time. So it'll go up to a certain point, which is half the animation time. Animation time is now set to about 4,000 ticks. Uh, this is a decent amount of time in actual seconds if we do the math really quickly here. 4,000 divided by 20, so that's 200 seconds divided by 60. So you get about three uh, and a third minutes is how long the animation time is. So it'll go up to a certain size, and then it'll slowly decrease down, back down on the number of beams. Now this, what I mean by size is of course the beam count. Uh, this will also come into play as I might actually start to randomize the beam length and a few other things. I have to be careful with how this actually works because this entire system is built with a randomizer is the reason how this works. Is there is no actual code that tracks where these beams are at any given time. It is entirely recreated every single frame but somehow manages to magically work. It's really cool. Uh, but with that, so they got rid of the size thing, uh, the beam count animation time is up, but there is now a separate variable for rotation time. As you can tell, the rotation now has a completely different handling. Uh, it now rotates 360 degrees. This was mainly done to fix issues where the animation would stall and then restart and stall and restart. That had to do with the fact that the animation is originally designed to go from 0 to 200, then turn off and start back up, and then do repeat that. So this is, after all, a was built from the Ender Dragon animation back in like 1.5 or 1.6. I don't remember exactly when it was built off of, but it was built off that. And of course that animation went out to a certain distance and then just turned off. It didn't really restart. So this had to be set up so now it has a ramp up, ramp down time so you get a nice continuous animation. Uh, so it looks a lot better. Removing the size scale removes a little bit of the seizure effect that you would get with the animation running and then stopping and then starting and then turning back on and everything else. So it looks a, not, a lot nicer, a lot smoother. There's a little bit more left to do with it. There's a lot of alpha transparency issues that need to be fixed. I believe these can actually be seen through walls is what a few people told me. Let's actually test this. Yeah, you can see them through walls, so I definitely have to fix that. There's a lot of little bits and pieces to fix at the moment. But we're getting progress, it's moving forward, it's going to turn into a much, much smoother and cleaner mod over time. I hopefully, especially hope to get at some point to work on the disc animation, because it doesn't look as good. And I know ways I can improve this and make it look kind of like the center there, where it's got a nice alpha, like deep transparency going on with it. Anyways, the other client is opened up, so let's go ahead and look at this, and I'll show you what the other previous animation looked like, and we can compare them side by side. And of course, this uh, code will eventually play into effect with some of the other blasts. I'm going to be probably working a lot more of the animations. Uh, one of the things that I plan to probably work on next is the nuclear blast, getting a much nicer animation for that. Uh, of course, before any of that happens, I'm definitely going to be working on performance. I've been doing a ton of research into figuring out what is the best methodology we can go forward with to take and make sure that the explosions work the same, but have a much higher performance level to them. Uh, of course. It's one thing to fix performance, another thing to make sure that things actually work properly. So let's go in here and let's go ahead and grab ourselves a rocket launcher and a red matter missile. And this poor village is going to die. So you can tell with the previous one, the animation is different. It doesn't rotate the same way. It's not as fast. Uh, and you're getting pretty much that size scale. That's a seizure effect I was talking about. And then it resets. It snaps back. That kind of led to a not so nice animation. The reason why it actually does that snapping and back and forth is because the animation does actually reset back to a zero point and then starts moving again. And it sets back to a zero point and starts moving again. So you get a variety of changes and stuff to make it kind of trick you into believing the animation is a nice continuous animation. When in reality it actually is a hard start and finish on it. Which leads to kind of a not so good looking animation. Of course now with this version we have a much smoother animation and it works a lot nicer. Let me go ahead and snap these next to each other. So you can sit here and you look at them side by side. 
And all I have to do now is just add a slight randomization of the beam size and it would look really good. Of course with the 360 rather than 90 degree animation, because how this actually works if we go to the code. And we go to render, it actually down here is the rotation. This was previously a 90 degree rotation, randomization on the scale from 0 to 1. This is now handled via a 360 degree rotation. So to go all the way back around, which leads to that much smoother animation on this side. And it looks much more continuous and doesn't have a rigid uh, start and end point. It just overall looks good. Anyways, I'm going to leave you guys here and I'll be back with more videos talking about progress. Hopefully here next week we'll get started on two new projects. One will be updating Atomic Science and two I might start showing videos of the game I'm working on. I'm currently in the process of learning how to do Unity again and I've just made a Flappy Bird clone which is hilarious when you think about it. Somebody like me who's done so many years of programming stuff and can do cool stuff like this, I'm doing the simplest project ever to learn how to do things again. Anyways, uh, see you guys later with more videos.